Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Muscle of Yarn podcast. It's Thursday. It is January 23rd, and January is trying its hardest to uh, wiggle away from us here. Uh, so we are already two-thirds of the way through January. I know. I know. <laughs> How is that even possible? I don't know. So this is a podcast about knitting and spinning and sometimes spinning, crocheting, yarn, all things fiber related and lots of other random Vermont and non-Vermont stuff that Kelly and I like to talk about Mm -hmm. um, on podcast. Um, Oh, remind me about somebody who stopped by the store to tell you at the end. Oh. I forgot it in in the beginning. Oh, for like a show, oh, for shout outs or something? Oh, or somebody else. Just just somebody very cool that we I had a great conversation with awesome that I'll share with everybody and we just totally derailed so welcome yeah, to the sorry. podcast totally normal <laughs> I was trying not to derail by having you remind me but and then I, we and then we derailed anyway yeah it's totally fine um so we film at our yarn shop in Shelburne Vermont uh, which is Muscle of Yarn and we do film during business hours so you may see some customers wandering or hear some chatter or hear our doorbell chime mm-hmm. um And it just sort of adds to the ambiance, or so we're told. (laughs) Um, And you can find the store out on social media and Ravelry as Must Love Yarn. Uh, We do have an awesome Ravelry group, so jump jump on over and join us there. That's where I run most of our knit alongs and crochet alongs um, and other alongs. Occasionally we have other alongs that have nothing to do with knitting. and Instagram, that's probably the other place where we're the most active. Um, so, And I'm Angela. And I'm Kelly. And you can find me out on social media, Instagram, and a Ravelry as Junior Bird Kid. And you can find me on Instagram as Kelly O Spins. And you can find me on Ravelry as Kelly Spins. Yep. And we do have um, podcast mascots. Um, they are our mob of meerkats back here. Um, oh my gosh. That one the suggestion. Crow and Shay. Crow and Shay. Yeah. I was laughing yeah. hysterically. Yeah. I'm like, oh, we need to find two more meerkats. I know. I'm on a mission now to find some twin meerkats. Um, that it just was would be two the best. Meerkats. Crow and Shay. Shay. Yeah. Um, so this is our mob of meerkats. We have the original meerkat here. This is Gage. Um, Gage went on vacation this summer and brought home Stitch. Swatch. Swatch. I can't even keep them straight. Swatch. They do need Mrs. Weasley sweaters with their names on them. That would be hysterical. Would be hysterical. With their little little, little, little swatchy here. And then um, over the Christmas holidays, uh, we picked up this little guy, Stitch, um, which is the latest addition to the Meerkat Stitch mob. Stitch was in a box. Stitch was in a box. And you, too, could have hugs from a Meerkat. <laughs> um, so the growing family of Meerkats also have their own Instagram page. Feel free to follow them and their shenanigans. Um, also known as, what is Angela up to this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll put you guys back there. They kind of hang out and flap around and fall out of the couch. And at some point, we'll figure out some platform system for them so they can... We can put, like, a hook-on shelf on the back of the, the oh, couch and yeah. start lining them up, especially if we get Crow and Jay, too. Yeah, because we'll have too many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll start to look like those weird, creepy... Remember those cars in the 80s where people had stuffed animals in the back window? Yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, so, we like to start our podcast with uh, Pick of the Week. We do. And so the way this works is the product that we show you for the next two weeks from the date that the podcast airs, you get 10% off um, in our online store or in store with the code that we will give you. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different uh, this time. It actually doesn't impact you at all, other than nope. we're hoping it will encourage you to buy this particular yarn. Mm-hmm. Um, so our pick this week, actually, let's get into what the pick is, and then it'll all kind of <laughs> start to make more sense. It will. Uh, if you have any questions about where the coupon code goes, uh, we did a tutorial in episode 73. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Check that out if uh, things aren't making sense or you have any questions, let us know. We can help you out with that. So, we have a sock yarn Mm -hmm. uh, that we picked for our pick of the week this week. 
We do. It's Queensland Collections Perth. And it's 80% wool, 20% nylon. And it's got that fun Marley. marling look to it. It is fingering weight. And let me give you some more details. Where are the rest of the details? It is, there are 437 yards in a 100 gram ball. They're $12.99 regular price. Mm -hmm. And we currently have these six colorways in stock. Yep. And you could use it for a shawl. You could use it. Ooh, that one that we did, that Martina Bain pattern, the Puerto Mont. Mm -hmm. That would be, a lot of hers would be really cool in this yep. too. Because they're long color. Yep, hitchhiker, that like that would be mm -hmm. great because you could use every little bit of it. Um, you could use them for any of a lot of the shift yep. patterns. You could use these for the shift shawl, even yeah. though it's a fingering. Some people, towel. and some people have done them in all in fingering too. Yep. Yep. Um, um, I one of my actually both of my shift along hats were in fingering, so you could yeah use this um, for that. Yep, lots of options. Yep, very affordable option. Um, the uh, you could probably use it for that um, Figanati sequence cowl that I showed a few weeks ago mm. as well. That was just called for sport weight, but depending yeah. on what your gauge is. Yep. Uh, so what we're going to do with this one this time is you're still going to get 10% off with the coupon code. Um, this is Queens Queensland Perth. Um, but for every skein of this that's purchased in the next two weeks, um, we're going to make a donation um, to the folks in Australia. Yep. And we may pick a couple different charities, but... Depending on how much yarn you guys buy. Yeah. So the the reason that, that we started thinking about this is we were going to do an afternoon of knitting uh, the different wraps. They have, like, the bat wraps, the joey pouches, uh, the mittens for the quills that have burned their paws, all of those things. We were going to do a day of knitting for that. Uh, we did a little digging. They actually have all of the <laughs> the supplies the handcrafted supplies that they could possibly hand want crafters are awesome yeah everybody who's already donated is just they're amazing yep they're gonna still be t so taking some donations but only from um local australians that they'd rather have people from international countries use the money that they would have spent on shipping because it's not cheap to send yep. things to australia uh use the money they would have used on shipping to uh donate that towards getting them um supplies, supplies of food and yep. medical things for the animals uh because all of their their natural their natural diet has been burned right. so they're feeding them carrots and veggies and all the right. grain that would be for for livestock right. and other animals so so help us give back yep um by this week's pick of the week yep so the more you buy the bigger donation we'll make yeah we'll be able to make yeah we'll figure out a percentage of the total sales yep and send that off and we'll let you know um once the two weeks is over we'll tell you how much was raised yep and how much we're sending out to uh yep the charities yep um and i believe also if you're looking for other ways to support um my my friend Catherine, who does a lot of the like screen printing and mm -hmm. stuff for us she was uh selling t-shirts oh, nice. that was and the profits were going to koala rescue yep um so we'll throw a link into show notes if anybody's interested uh in that as well as another way yeah. to sort of you know participate and and give back yeah there's so. a ton of, re of yeah. rescues and uh resources and places that are taking donations obviously you want to do a little bit of homework and find right. them but um there's a there's a lot of good ones there's ones to support the firefighters that are fighting the wildfires mm -hmm. um obviously the animal uh rescues yep. there's a number of zoos that have taken wildlife in yep. and are rehabilitating them so they can get them back out in the wild yep. and um there's a koala rescue uh, mm -hmm. the wwf uh that there's a um, a chapter in Australia. Yep. And uh, there's a there's a number of them. There's actually the Australia has its own humane society um, yep. organization too. Yep. So there's a lot of them. So yes, we'll find an appropriate one. And so um, weekly pick Perth. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
weekly prick perth 10 percent off every scan you buy we'll make a donation so if you needed some more motivation to buy yarn <laughs> there you go <laughs> you can feel good while doing it and if somebody in your household wants to give you a hard time you just be like no it's for charity right there you go <laughs> it's a win-win <laughs> across the board i bought it for charity i know bought it for charity i too awesome awesome so what you wearing cal i am wearing my testament which i'm not going to talk a whole lot about because it hasn't been released yet okay but she's wearing it. Um, I I'm am wearing, wearing my dark and stormy. It was so comfy, <laughs> and I've got to wash some of my my other sweaters because yeah. I've been wearing them so much. Yeah, we've had very good sweater weather here lately. Yeah, it's been good. It yeah. was it was chilly early this week. Yes, it, it was really chilly. So I'm wearing my dark and stormy. This is a Thea Coleman um, pattern. I knit this one quite a while ago. I get a lot of use out of it. It's kind of tends to be more my around the house sweater kind of cardigan um but occasionally when I am feeling like I need to be cozied up into something that's what I pull out and where to work if I don't have you know people coming in or I'm just going to be in the office for the day yeah um I also am wearing some socks some hand knit socks been getting a lot of mileage out of hand knit socks and I Mm -hmm. show you guys these are mine this is Artemis um, by Cookie A. It's a probably really bad. Sorry, I had to look at the bottom of my foot. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> so proud of me. <laughs> uh, and I did earlier have my Jody shawl on, but I took it off because it's warmed up considerably here. It's almost 40 today. and Has it really? Yeah, it's yeah, it warmed up quite a bit outside. Uh, and I was just, I was getting too hot with it on, so I took it off. So it's in the show notes, and it's sitting in that chair over there, <laughs> but it's not on my body right now. <laughs> too hot. Too hot. Too hot. Um, but yes, I have been, I actually, I wore Sing Winter last week mm. on Friday when it was so cold, and I've been wearing lots of hand knits lately. Not the last two days because I've been in court. Well, I wear shawls when I go to court, but no sweaters. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Finished objects? Nope. I have one that oh. nobody even saw because I hadn't cast it on yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, actually, before – I'm just all over the place today. So, I've not finished Felix. Mm-hmm. Um, that should surprise nobody. Um, I did finish the second sleeve. Cool. Yep. And uh, it, I'm, I want to give it a little bath before I pick up for the button bands because for me it's just easier. The sweaters tend to lay a little better and the stitches mm-hmm. are flatter. Um, so I haven't done that yet uh, because it requires that I clear some space to put my drying stuff out uh, in the spare bedroom mm-hmm. where it's, it's currently my – yarn staging area so it's sort of a disaster <laughs> it looks like a bomb went off yarn bomb went off um so it's uh, just tucked into my little bag and I was like all right I'm gonna get some other stuff so it'll probably get button bands in June I don't know we'll see mm-hmm. we'll see um but I knit hat cute that's cute so this is ice time Yes, the Ice Time Hat by Jennifer Lassonde. That's cute. It looks really small. It does look it small. It does actually fit my head. So it stretches? It does. It's very beanie style. Very beanie style. Uh, I probably also could have added a couple of extra repeats. Um, because I'm a tight knitter, my row gauge tends to almost always be super off. <laughs> as in short Uh, but I think this is going to be one of the hats that uh, goes to the scout Mm. silent auction yeah Um, I think I have enough yarn so this is leftover yarn from when I did my shift oh okay I was wondering it's pretty thank you I like the colors yeah it's the sandbank and the chispas Mm -hmm. I think I actually have enough to do some little fingerless mitts oh cute Uh, and so I was pulling some just 
basic fingerless mitts uh, patterns because I might try to put this patterning on the mitts. We'll see. That'd be fun. It would be fun. Yeah. Um, she did do a cowl pattern as well, um, but I don't... Sorry, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. I might actually... I might have enough to do the cowl. I don't know. I think I'll go with mitts. I think a hat and matching mitts would be nice mm -hmm. for the auction. We'll see. Stay tuned. Clearly, it didn't take me that long to knit. Hats are fast. Yeah, they are. I needed something, like, quick. Yeah. So that's, like, my one FO. I've been doing a lot of customer finishing mm. sweaters, putting button bands on, fixing yeah. necklines, sewing buttons on, blocking, etc., etc., Nice. I um, so I started a couple of new things. Cool. Because that's also what one does. Just starts things. Cat stylitis. I started the pokey hat. Did you? That's what I'm working on right here. Nice. Probably also gonna go in for the auction. There's enough Pokemon fans in the scouts. <laughs> Probably go. Uh, or at least go for what some child can talk their parents into bidding <laughs> on it. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm using a Dream Baby uh, DK yarn for this. So it's acrylic. There's actually no wool in it. But, you know, for something like this that would get abused or need to get washed, it's probably the good option. Okay, yeah. And, you know, they had the nice, you know, bright red and the bright blue that are like the Pokemon colors. Um, so... So working on that, we'll see how much of each skein um, one hat takes. The color work portion is which the red, the black, and the uh, white are used for doesn't take very much. I'm curious to see how much of the blue I use and whether I can get a second hat mm -hmm. um, out of the yarn that I have. Um, because I'm sure at least one of my children, if not both of them, will uh, be very sad that they don't have a pokey hat. So I might be knitting multiples, multiples. of them. Yeah, but we'll see. We shall see. Cool. And I did start the shift cowl as well. Nice. The purples? The pur greeny purples. Um, yeah. Oh, I like it. I think it's gonna, and again, this would, if I get it done, would go up into the auction bin as well. It's all sort of stash yarn. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, I do remember this. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, gonna be fun. The greens. Yep. Cool. Yeah. And this shift pattern is just, it's so conducive to just whatever. Yeah. I mean, you could put colors together that you would never put together. I know, and the, it, and I've it seen looks some beautiful. amazing shifts. Yes. Yeah. I, this one might be a little more subdued because it's all basically the same color palette. Yeah. Um, which is, is fine. Which is fine. But those have been, the one that I did, the really neutral one, mm -hmm. that's been really popular. And we've got a really bright one in here, too. Yep. And they're both really, I love them both, but yeah. it's it's interesting how often the kind of neutral color one, people are like, oh. Oh, I didn't know you could do that with that. I really like yeah. that. Or they can see themselves wearing it, I yeah. guess. So, yeah. Yep. I, and I was surprised because, I mean, I like it, but I, I'm really drawn to some of the really bright ones. So Right. And for me, says the lady who the last week has been picking up her gray shawl, um, dark gray shawl. The person who's been knitting either gold or or gray. <laughs> Shawls are one place where I think you yeah. can get away with wearing sort of those wilder colors that you wouldn't normally wear because it's just an accent. Yeah. Um, so it's a good place to play with colors. Yeah. Uh, Especially if you've got a fairly good neutral wardrobe too because mm -hmm. then you can just throw it on over yeah grays or browns or blacks or whatever your exactly. neutral is exactly all of the above yeah. <laughs> um so that's kind of what i've been doing i mean i did knit a whole second sleeve on the felix mm -hmm. so uh i'll 
throw a picture in because I can now <laughs> without much trouble of the second sleeve in case anybody was concerned that I had not gotten the second sleeve done. Mm, so you're you're done with that. So that's awesome. Sleeves are... The sleeves are done. They just need button bands and the neck collar and, and buttons. I have knit so many button bands in the last couple of weeks. Mm. I love doing them. <laughs> well, <laughs> if mine stalls out, I know where it's going. Okay. Can I don't know why. It's so funny. I love doing button bands. I'm getting better at them. I pick. I tend to pick up too many stitches, mm. and so then I get the like mm-hmm. weird stuff happening. Ripply kind Ripply, of funny. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. And I would like to try to find buttons in my stash to use my button stash. I use uh, buttons so. from my stash. Nice. So I'm gonna look in my button stash first. And see if I can find something that will work. I bought a whole bunch when Knits and Bolts closed. Mm. And that's what these are from. Nice. I bought some there too. But I don't know what I was knitting at the time. I bought a bunch of like really giant buttons. <laughs> like, I don't know. What was I knitting? Um, well, the, the sweaters that just closed at the top or like. Ah. The felted bags were really popular right that's around that true. time. And I know because I have some from, I don't have a ton from them. Yeah. But. I have a few of the big buttons because, you know, you do a loop to... Right. So, right. um... I don't know either. I buy lots of buttons at, like, Joann's when I go in, if they're on sale. Mm. I have a whole box of random buttons. We'll see. There's probably something in there. Yeah. I've had no shortage of buttons I bought at, like, Rambeck that I've never used. I know. Actually, I had a set, the Melissa Jean buttons, the yeah. nice ceramic ones. Yeah. I had some that would have worked for this, too. I, I laid them out. I have I have these, which are a pewter one, and then I have, like, a bronze version of these same exact buttons because I like them so much. Yeah. And then I had the Melissa Jean ones, and I was laying them out on the sweater, and I was like, hey, which buttons do you like to my husband? And he comes over, those. And it was these. And those were the ones I was leaning towards. Yeah. Um. The Melissa Jean ones would have worked, but they're not perfect for it, so right. I decided to. Right. And since it was really funny, he liked these, and I and those were the ones I had been leaning towards. I hadn't said anything to him on which ones I had liked. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, that kind of confirms what. What I'm going to do here. Yeah. Yeah. I will have to see if I have the right sized buttons, because yeah. that's also the challenge. Yeah. Um. I should have, if I have the right size, I should have six. I need six for that sweater. Okay. Um, so that shouldn't be an issue. This sweater was supposed to, I think you're supposed to do 11 buttons. Oh, so you did bigger buttons and less of them. So I, I, I did a, picked up a lot less stitches than it recommended in the pattern. Um, and I'll talk about it more next week when I talk about the actual sweater. But the yarn I used was pretty big for getting the gauge that was required for the pattern so but i'll talk about that next time sounds good maybe it will motivate me to put buttons on felix and then we can talk about button bands and buttons now i have a project i know i do have backer buttons on mine i usually yeah i usually do too i didn't do ribbon because this yarn is substantial so i didn't do ribbon but i did do backer buttons nice um, I don't. I might have knit a little bit on the sock, Abigail's sock. I didn't bring it. It's just a tube. Tube sock. Tube sock. I don't use a pattern. I don't use a pattern many times for socks unless I'm doing something cable y or that's a little trying a new technique. Mm-hmm. Um, so for her sock, I just cast on 48 stitches. Uh, which was just my best guess as to what would fit her. Uh, And I'm knitting it in a two-by-two rib. So even if I'm a little off, the ribbing will suck in, and the yarn that I'm using has elastic in it. So it's kind of pretty forgiving. Um, And her little feet are going to grow. They will. And 
both of my kids seem to have pretty narrow feet and they do both have little teeny tiny stick bird legs <laughs> so the 48 stitches should be just fine for her uh, and it's just a lot of knitting because you've got to knit it a lot longer than you would think and she did tell me she wanted them to go up to her knees She's not demanding at all or opinionated about anything. Mm-hmm. You have no idea where she's gotten that from. That's funny. Mystery. I know. Total mystery. Total mystery. Yeah. I'm still working on my stowaway sweater. Yes. And I'm almost um, just more than halfway through the second chart. And then after that, it's all stuck in it. A lot of stuck in it. Uh, so it... It's going to go really quickly, and it's really hard to see because I have this on a 24-inch cable. <laughs> I should probably put it on a bigger one. But... I think you just have to put it so. on a smaller one once you divide for the sleeves. Well, I and... could go down to a 32, and I'd be fine, but... Or go up to a yeah, 32, it's sorry. Working. It's working. Yeah. yeah. I just cleared one off, so a 32, so... Oh. But yeah, so it's hard to see. <laughs> you don't subscribe to my method, which is just like, I'll buy another cable. I can't well, find the cable I need. I mean, I've done that before, but now I've done it enough times that... You're like, this is kind I've of got, ridiculous. I've got enough that I can find now. <laughs> so, there it is. Sort of. Kind of. Kind of, sort of. But it's really pretty kind of trailing leaves looking pattern. So nice. I like it. And yeah, so once I get to the stocking net... It's going to fly. Awesome. I mean, this is flying, too, cause, because lace, for me, is kind of, for not for everybody, I know, but for me, it's kind of potato chippy, and I get one row done, I'm like, ooh, I want to get to the next one. Ooh, I want to do the next one, so. That's probably the reason why this hat went so quick, because it's got, like, a little potato chippy cable in it, yeah. and you're just like, oh, I'm just going to do the next one. Yeah. Oh, just the next one. Yeah, exactly. So, that is coming right along. And nice. that's pretty much, other than customer projects, mostly been what I've been working on. I yep. did put a few more rows on my Limitless Cowl option number three, which is this guy. Nice. And I should hopefully have the pattern maybe towards the end of next week. Nice. So. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we kicked off a, a new cowl, mm. the retro along. Excellent. Thanks to everybody who got the joke about the start date. <laughs> I was just confused when you, I was like, what? Why are we announcing oh. it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so the retro along has already started. <laughs> it had already started before we made the announcement. It started when you. <laughs> um, all the details are up in the Ravelry page. Uh, it's going to go till about March 4th. Uh, and so, retro yarn, retro patterns, retro style, uh, whatever works. If you are unsure, ask the question in the group whether it would qualify. Um, I think in the history of doing Kyle's, I have only said no once. Um, so as you can tell, we're pretty loosey goosey with the rules here, um, and just bonus uh, bonus entries for the older it is. So for every decade of age that is, I think somebody was doing something. For, oh no, that was our example last week from 1920. You get like 10 entries. So for every decade, um, you get an extra entry. Mm-hmm. So um, I think why don't we do it this way? so it doesn't like spam the um the finished objects thread when you do your post just tell us what decade it's from yeah i'll do the math i'll enter that number of times into the into a spreadsheet and we'll pull that way um just so don't enter it 10 times in the ravelry group um just tell us and we'll make that adjustment for the number of entries um because i think otherwise this one could get really out of hand with like people scrolling and be like why is the same one in here 10 times i've got some cool pattern books from like like 50s i think there's there might even be one from like the 40s 40s 50s 60s there's some really cool kind of vintagey like very traditional styling sweaters yep and i was like oh that'd be fun to do 
don't know if I have time right now to do one though. Nice. A lot of them are, of course, piece too, because they didn't do a lot of circular right. stuff then. Right. Which is fine. I just love seaming. Just like seaming. Well, in certain sweaters, they work better being seamed. Structured. Structurally. Wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the fit of a lot of like set in sleeves on me better too. So I may just have to do one. Nice. I know. Nice. Uh, so I haven't come up with any other uh, no longs. Don't fear. Something will come to me. Some inspiration. Mm-hmm. I'll figure it out. Just been in a little, in a work jam and Crazy um, spell. when I'm in like distracted work mode, um, it's hard for my creative brain to fire up. So it's doing creative things of another nature, not of a knitting nature. So. It'll come. Yep. We'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, and so, what else? Oh, announcements and other fun things coming up. Uh, the registration for the retreat opens February 1st mm-hmm. at noon. We are so excited. Uh, the retreat is June 4th through the 7th. Um, of this year 2020 it's going to be at the same location as the previous one the yeah. bishop booth conference center at it's rock now point. called rock point center they oh changed the name. okay sorry i'm gonna have to update all of our materials i updated some of it good job as i saw it good job cal mm-hmm. rock point center rock point center same place right on lake champlain in burlington uh, we got a lot of fun stuff planned for the weekend uh, tammy from wing and a prayer farm is going to be there the entire weekend with us uh, she's going to be teaching a natural dye class on Saturday. Uh, Cece from Cece's Wool is going to be there. Uh, she's going to be also uh, doing a weaving class. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really exciting. And we had some really awesome pop-up classes last year. Yeah, we did. Um, and that we just kind of wait till people arrive be like, what do you want to do? And Jen. Who, Farley, yeah. She is coming again, and she did a really good pop-up class last year so i'm sure because yes. she does a lot of teaching i'm sure yeah. we can talk her into doing some oh for yeah us again so so excited yeah. we have um we've arranged for a wine winery tour and wine tasting we have lunch at the vineyard yep well i guess they're well they do have vines there so they're oh yeah the vineyards yep too. and it'll be june so if the weather's great oh, can i know go through the it's vineyard. such a pretty vineyard too yes it's really pretty and um our f- friend of the store Rick is going to be catering the lunch, so I know. I'm really excited yeah, about that. He's done he's quite a bit of catering for us before done. and does phenomenal stuff. Amazing food. Yeah. And then we're going to have uh, some fun um, activities at the store uh, with some of our Barocos yarn. Yep, Andra. So Andra if you came last year, again. Andra's coming and going to do a um, wine or yarn tasting. <laughs> yarn tasting. Yarn tasting. We'll do the wine tasting first then the yarn tasting so we'll have uh the spring line by that point mm-hmm. and she may have you guys may get who come to the retreat sneak may peek. get a sneak peek of fall before anybody else not sure yet the timing is very it's close very close so that would be so exciting I know, that would be fun um so that was really fun everybody had a good time um I am now the proud owner of knitting the card game. So we now have two sets <laughs> of it. That was so fun. That was a uh, fun game. So I think in addition to doing a movie night, we may also do a game night. I am in for game night. I love – we should just bring a bunch of board games anyway. I I've love got, playing If games. I can steal Pokemon Monopoly from my child, we could play that. It's really just like – it's basically Monopoly just with Pokemon I guys. I regular Monopoly. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we should. We should do game night. I love games. It would be so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have Scrabble, and yeah. uh, I've got I've got a bunch because I love board games. Yeah, I have one that I'll bring it even if nobody plays it. I get mocked mercilessly at my house for having it. It's called like Bio Biovia. It's like a natural like sciences like trivia game. Uh, yeah, I think I've I've got a Trivial Pursuit. I think I've got the Trivial Pursuit. What is it? Is it the 90s edition? Awesome. I know. I yes. Know. I'm pretty sure I've got mine is the 90s edition because and I got it. When did I get it? I've had it for a long time. Oh my god, that would be amazing. 
I think it came out in like the early 2000s. Like at, awesome. after the, you know, yeah, the decade change. Yeah. Okay, so we're out. definitely doing game night. <laughs> like, this is going to be so much fun. Yeah, so we have two copies of Knitting the Card Game now. Because only four people can play per set. Yeah, two um, to four people can play yeah. at a time. I may get one, too, so that so we'll that have would, another one. Yeah, Twelve people. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's fun. It's super fun. fun. And, all right, so that's going on. Um, update for everybody on the Seasons of Vermont. Uh, so those are going to go on sale February 14th. Mm-hmm. Buy yourself something nice for Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, they are the boxes are going to be hundred dollars. I believe that's what Jen said. Okay, yeah. and you're gonna get yarn, a pattern, bag, and some Vermont goodies. And I've started seeing some of the stuff. It, it Things is fun. started to show up. So we're gonna kind of tease you for a little bit, and so I would say really say watch our Instagram yeah. account because that's where. Uh, we'll s- start posting pictures of the uh-huh. yarn and the bags. But we can say that it is a Vermont farm yarn this time. Yes. So yes. if you want a real little slice of Vermont. Yep. And a pattern is um, Jen designed the pattern. Yeah, Jen yep. designed the pattern. Yep. It's cute. It is cute. I saw pictures. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So we're really excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so mark your calendars for those. Yep. Happy Valentine's Day. With Seasons of Vermont, 2020 edition. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's some cool goodies going in that box. There That's are, because the other the other little things that are going in there from that other Vermont artisan, she had some cool stuff. I know. I know. Yeah. Sorry, we're being really cryptic because <laughs> we're under strict orders. We are to be cryptic. Yeah. So we're abiding by those orders. Mm-hmm. We're doing pretty good. Yeah. I think we get to... <laughs> next week. Show show you on the 7th? Is that next week? No, no. Next week's the 30th. We can talk about it more, I think, next week. Okay. I think we can't show it. We have a timetable. We do. It's like countdown to release day. <laughs> Jen's really good at, at that kind of very thing. very organized. She's, yeah. So We tend... I... And by we, I mean me. <laughs> tend to fly by the seat of my pants with this kind of stuff sometimes. So... She's good at mapping She's, everything yes. out. I mean, she has to be for what yes, she does. Just so. project management and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, so, and I wanted to do a quick shout out um, to family friend, uh, Tabby, who watches the podcast. Oh. Um, your mom sent my mom a picture of the sweater you knit for your daughter, and my mom sent it to me. So the sweater was awesome. Thanks for sharing <laughs> through your mom. <laughs> I don't know if I just followed all of that, but okay. (laughs) Um, So beautiful, beautiful work. Love the sweater. And thank you for watching. (laughs) Um, I don't know that I have too much else we got. It's kind of a short one this week. It is. So I've got two more things. One, oh. that thing that you told me to talk about. Yes, that, that I, thing. I told you that the, the person I had to tell you that I talked about. Clearly I remembered. But the other thing. Oh, yeah. We haven't had the by hand books in before. But I noticed that the by hand for this next episode issue, whatever it is. Whatever it is. The issue is Vermont and New Hampshire. Awesome. So I got it for the store. So we do, we will have this. It's going on sale the 25th. Saturday. Saturday. So you only have to wait one more day after this podcast goes up. Mm-hmm. So Saturday, and there's lots of great stuff in here. Yeah. There's a big article about Wing and a Prayer Farm. Nice. Tammy's pie recipe. There's a pie recipe she did in here. Awesome. There's uh, some Green Mountain Spinnery Loaf. There's some Harrisville Design, nice. Wooly Thistle. Uh, oh, Marshfield School of Weaving. Awesome. That's super cool. And yeah, so it's all things Vermont and New Hampshire. Awesome. So, Saturday. Check this out. They sell for $23, and we will have them up on the website and in store. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. That's Harrisville. It's such a pretty pretty setting yeah so 
nice. I know. Super cool. So what was the other thing? So the other thing is um, we had a really cool person come in the store today. So John Crane, he lives over on the other side of the state, but he was visiting a friend. And he stopped in, and I don't know if you remember or not, but not the last time Larissa was here with Green Mountain Spinnery, but the time before that, they actually had some of the John Crane yarn. Yes. So. And it was beautiful. Stunning. And I might have bought some of it. Yeah. So, John Crane has been involved in the fiber arts industry for for many many years and has designed for different yarn companies and nice. done some really cool stuff and he's super knowledgeable and he did a project which is i think he told me he took 73 different breeds of sheep's wool and at vermont sheep and wool he's had that display he's shown that display at the vermont sheep and wool he actually took it to maryland sheep and wool and uh, but it's it's locks of the the fleece, and uh, some of the the yarn that's been spun yep. in in sh- so he shows it in yarn form and then knit the it. Form. Interesting. Uh, so you and it so he did um, fine wool, medium wool, coarse wool, longer hair wool, um, not hair wool, but long long wools. Um, heritage breeds and down breeds so those are the five wow. categories that they've got nice. but it, it was yeah I, I do remember he asked me if he's seen it I was like gosh I was so busy I don't remember but I, I do remember I saw it very briefly but I really didn't get to study it and so he had a bunch of yarn left over after he did that project so he took a green mountain spinnery and they did some very limited edition yarns and I don't know if they have any more left or not they were only selling it um, on their website and through the mill. Yeah. But anyway, so that display, it's a very, very cool display and it was so well done. He's actually, um, taking it out and it's going to live permanently in, um, uh, Brooklyn Tweed's oh, cool. office. Wow. So out on the West coast. Cool. So it's going to stay there. And then they're also going to, when they go to different events, they'll take it with them too. Awesome. So people can kind of experience oh, it nice isn't that really cool yeah so yeah he's he's phenomenal and i had so much fun we were just chatting fiber and yarn and everything and it's almost like the kind of thing depending on how it's set up in the boards where you could do like a series of posters mm. i mean it's not the same yeah. as touching it but just to have because of the information like you yeah. could almost sell like a poster series yeah with it or something yeah it's kind of like the fleece and fiber source book but like in, right and like tangible yeah so amazing yeah so, uh, yeah, it was really cool. I had so much fun chatting with him. I had never met him before, and nice. he is fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, he was he was very, very cool guy. There's so many neat people that come there into really the store. Are. I know. We get to meet so many great people. Yeah. Just any anybody and everybody. Just, just getting the opportunity to yeah. chat with people who are so enthusiastic about the things that we, you know, yeah. we love. So Absolutely. But, yeah. Nice. I know. That's all I got. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure my schedule is clear for the next, you know, okay. few Thursdays. So yeah, I think um, we should be all good. Cool. Um, next week. Good. So. All right. Well, well, we'll wrap it up for yeah. today. And so thank you everybody for stopping by. Yeah. Um, we are so glad you were able to spend a little bit of time with us. And uh, for all the new people, thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you do, please feel free to subscribe and, you know, keep keep coming back. Mm-hmm. So. I love all the chatter out. All the comments have been really fun. And and as normal, we don't always get to reply to them all. But as you can see from our response, we do read them we all. Do read They're them. really fun. Yeah, we we yeah. so enjoy it. So exactly. thank you guys for interacting with us. It's yeah. it's why we keep doing this. Week Absolutely. After week. Absolutely. So thank you, everyone, mm-hmm. and we'll see you next week. Okay. All right. Bye. The tripod while we're recording. While it's like while flopping it's around flopping all over the place, looking like an earthquake. It seems to give you guys lots and lots of pleasure. Oh, I have to go grab one more thing. Okay, well, you know what happens when you leave me here to Is adjust rambling? things. Well, apparently I can't adjust this very well. I think I made it worse.
Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Close enough. I don't actually think that I've fixed anything. <laughs> oh. The Vermont and New Hampshire Tammy is in this an awful lot. Wow. And hair spills in here. And is that new? It is it hasn't gone out yet. Oh. Is this a sneak peek? There's Martha. Oh. It's a sneaky sneak peek. Tammy making pie. It's awesome. That yeah. this is like the new style of kind of magazine yeah. type stuff. There's Bill oh, Barn jacket. Nice. Isn't that cool? That is so cute. Green mouse spinners. Of course, I have um, all of the making magazines. And do you think that I've made anything out of the making magazines? Oh, that would be a negative ghostwriter. Yeah. I love those too. Oh, they did a thing on Marshfield School weaving. Oh. Which is very wow. cool. Yeah. Nice. That is cool. When does that get released officially? Saturday. <gasps> Might have to pop in and grab a copy. I really like that. Amy Christopher's design that. I really like her spinner. stuff. Yeah, she does a great job. So, um, so we've given it? Abigail a new nickname. Uh oh. Yeah. So I started calling her Speed Racer, <laughs> which she has embraced. So she's never, neither of my kids have really been enamored with nicknames ever. Yeah. For whatever reason, she's... I know, because William, oh, like, he, will he just, is a William. He is William. And he's not Will, try, he's no. not Willie, he's not Bill, he's not anything but William. If you William. try to sh ask him what he goes by, he's like, William? And he looks at you like, I know, why like, are you even asking? Why would I go by anything else? Yeah. Yeah. So, St. Abigail's kind of the same way with her name, and um, so anyway, so I called her Speed Racer the other night because she was like <laughs> running around like a wild thing. <laughs> she has embraced it and made it her own. So now she runs oh through the house yelling, "Speedy Gecko Racer!" Oh, like my I, god! I don't even know where the gecko came from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah. That's hilarious. Beady Gecko Racer. Speedy gecko Racer. Like, okay. So, yeah, so she's now Speedy Gecko. Okay. Speedy Gecko. So next time I see her, Speedy Gecko. She's been really shy the last few times she's come in. She's starting to warm back up to folks again. Kids go through that yeah. weird phase. Yeah. Two, three-ish. Um, but, yeah, she's, she's starting to come around. <laughs> Oh, yes. Thank you. So anyway, so Speedy Gecko. Speedy Gecko. <laughs> I'm just fixing that drop lace stitch. Ew. -oo. There we go. Right, wow. That's fine. No problem. There. Done. Right, wow. Okay. Um. So it's been. It's been a weird week. One kid with no school Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah, it was an in-service day. Really? That's convenient that they did that. I know, right? Um, and, you know, lots of stuff was closed on Monday. I was still working Monday. Store was open Monday. Uh, but... Yeah, it's been a weird week. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is a part of the podcast which you would have already figured out by this point. Um, we're not pulling prices for, the warm, for yarn call because I literally could not get my act together. Um, it's a miracle I made it here um, in time to do the podcast before Kelly has a private lesson. Um, it's just it's been it's been one of those weeks. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow's Friday. We're kind of excited about that. <laughs> um, Except I have a presentation I have to give tomorrow, which is fine. That's 
but it's taken I spent a good chunk of the morning putting together the presentation like I was mm. going to recycle one of my old ones and then I finally kind of got an inspiration to do something a little bit different so then that took some time to yeah. you know build up the PowerPoint though most of the text was already done it was just really getting it in the order that I wanted yeah I was kind of waffling back and forth about which program I was going to use um, occasionally I use a program called Prezi it's an online based mm-hmm. one um, and for certain things, like, it works better. It's a little more visually appealing than, like, PowerPoint. Um, but I finally settled on PowerPoint. I was like, mm, I think I really just need PowerPoint for this particular presentation. These are really, these are the problems I deal with. <laughs> mm-hmm. So... And I also had to find some, like, inspirational quote and, you know, do some, like, write my bio and, you know, stuff like that. So I found some uh, inspirational quote. I'm totally going to muddle it because I have it written down in my notes. But it's um, something along the lines of um, the mind is not like a vessel that you fill. It's a fire that you tend. Mm. Cool. Yeah. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Kind of like that whole lifelong learning thing. Mm-hmm. That is true. And I mean, just from experiences you gain and things, mm-hmm. you know, it changes your perspective on things you've already learned to. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously it doesn't change facts, but right. <laughs> it changes right. how you think about things. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So with some, uh, it's like uh, Plutaris or uh, somebody can fact check me. I can't remember. Some person from ancient Greece <laughs> lived a really long time ago. It was very wise. It's probably not even a correct, attrib- correctly attributed quote as well. So, anyway, <laughs> that's probably not even correct, right? Because it gets translated from like ancient Greece. I'm sure there's something lost in the translation. Probably. So, like a knitting pattern that came in the other day. Really? Oh. Something got lost in translation. <gasps> Oh, some of the numbers were wrong, and yeah, it was bad. Yeah, I can see that. That's yes, exactly. Then you just kind of have to rely on experience and wing it. <laughs> wing, wing, and it works. Wing, and it works. And it was it was hard because there weren't stitch counts given. Ooh. This there was a schematic, but it didn't have any measurements on it. It was just like a a line drawing. Oh. So I'm, you really had nothing to go on, except for because I've knit enough sweaters. I I the customer that I was talking to I was like, well, so this measurement is normally this mm-hmm. on most sweaters. Yeah. And this measurement is normally this. So if we aim to get to there based on your gauge, <laughs> this is what we have to shoot for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's tough. I, I think that's the, that's the downside of sometimes places like Ravelry mm. because there's so many patterns and they're a varying degrees of test knit and you know some of them are just notes that people put together and this was a book she had bought at a yarn store oh okay and it had been this I don't know if it was the whole book or that particular pattern or what I don't even remember what the the book title was yeah it was like one of the small like pamphlet kind of ones no it was it was kind of like well kind of like the size of like nomadic knits they're making or something like that I mean it was a fairly substantial I had quite a few don't mind me <laughs> patterns we're still in the outtakes <laughs> that's good quite a few patterns in it but yeah I hope you've just toppled the meerkat tower oh they're still there <laughs> pardon me meerkats. pardon me mer- mob of meerkats <gasps> huh yeah so okay, well I take it back. Not the problem with Ravelry. Well, it was yeah, it, it wasn't just, a Ravelry pattern or anything, or even just a, you know, a, yeah, it was just missing a whole lot of information that is would have been useful, Interesting. especially for something that had been translated. Yeah. Because I mean numbers and things like that 
can certainly be translated, but that was part of the problem. Some of the numbers were wrong. So I don't know if it had A, a test netting issue, mm-hmm. B, a translation <laughs> issue. Or both. Yeah, so. Got it. Yeah, what are you going to do? You got it sorted though, right? I think so. We'll see. Nice. Well, given our time constraints on the mm-hmm. other side, we should probably get a get a little move on here. Yep. All right.